St. Lucie County kicked off its new budget year with the lowest tax decrease in more than a decade. Find out what that means next on Inside St. Lucie. Hello, welcome to this edition of Inside St. Lucie, SLC TV's monthly government affairs show. I'm your host, Eric Gill, Communications Director for St. Lucie County, and on today's show, I'll be joined by St. Lucie County Commissioner Kathy Townsend from District 5 to talk about the year in review as well as the upcoming year ahead. But before we sit down with the Commissioner, here's some upcoming events and announcements from the Board of County Commissioners. The 2021 Firefighter Combat Challenge World Championship Finals will be held on Friday, November 7th and Saturday, November 6th in downtown Fort Pierce next to the Moores Creek Boat Ramp launch between the Bacchus Gallery and the Manatee Center. Dubbed the toughest two minutes in sports, come out and support St. Lucie County's team of firefighters who are defending their gold championship from last year. For more details, visit PlayTreasureCoastFlorida.com. The 36th Annual Muster and Music Festival will take place at the National Navy UDT Seal Museum on North Hutchison Island Friday, November 5th through Sunday, November 6th. This free event features live music, keynote speakers, free admission into the museum, and ceremonies to honor the Navy Seals, which got their start here in Fort Pierce. For more information, visit NavySealMuseum.org. The third annual Treasure Coast Wine and Ale Trail Festival takes place on Saturday, November 20th from 1 to 5 p.m. at Summer Crush Vineyard and Winery, located at 4200 Johnston Road in Fort Pierce. Organized by St. Lucie County's Tourism Office, Visit St. Lucie, tickets for this event are $25 in advance or $30 at the door, which provide each attendee with one tasting glass and unlimited tastings. Children 12 years and younger receive free admission. The event features live music, food trucks, and a variety of craft beer, cider, and wine from local breweries. Tickets can be purchased online at tcwineandaletrail.com. Now for the latest information about all St. Lucie County Commission meetings, workshops, and events, visit our website at stlucieco.gov and click on our comprehensive calendar. We also have information on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Nextdoor. Just look for St. Lucie Gov. We're going to take a quick break. Before we do, we're going to check in with the latest economic development stats with another St. Lucie Works. For the third consecutive month, St. Lucie County's tourism numbers showed huge improvements, with July's bed tax revenue increasing by 111% compared to July 2020. This was also a 61.7% increase compared to July 2019, setting another record-breaking month. It is the highest collection in July on record. Overall building activity in unincorporated St. Lucie County remained strong in July, with 1,341 permits submitted compared to June's 1,241 permits. The housing market continues to remain strong. According to the Florida Realtors Association, the median home sale price in St. Lucie County in July was $315,000, up 26% from last year, while condo values dropped slightly by roughly 4% with the median price at $220,000. St. Lucie's unemployment dropped in July to 5.4% compared to June 6.1%. Statewide, the unemployment rate was 5.1%. The largest increases in the labor force in the Treasure Coast were in professional services with 4,600 new jobs, followed by leisure and hospitality with 2,800 jobs, and construction and trades with 2,000 new jobs. Government continued to experience the largest decrease. If you work for a local business looking for skilled or trained labor, be sure to contact the staff at Career Source as they can assist your company with its recruitment and training needs. And if you're an individual looking for a job, they can help you as well. Visit the Career Source online at careersourcerc.com or call 1 866 for you to hire. Welcome back to Inside St. Lucie. I'm your host, Eric Hill, and I'm joined by St. Lucie County Commissioner for District 5, Kathy Townsend. Commissioner, thanks for joining me on the show. Good afternoon. Always a pleasure. Thanks so much. You know, we just finished the budget workshop uh, or budget, final budget hearing, but budget workshops were back in June. This is your third budget, right? No. Four? Fifth. Fifth? Fifth. Fifth. That's right. I'm sorry, I lost track. I lost a, I lost two years. I know, it doesn't seem like it's been, the, I know, COVID, right? Yeah, that's true. The two-year COVID blip, or a year and a half. So how did you think the budget process went this year? Um, I'm not happy with it. Yeah? <laughs> I, I just, you know me, I, I believe that with all the opportunity to eat, that the taxpayers have given us, you know, like let's talk about last election. They didn't uh, pass the homestead. You know, there was a lot of things that they, 
they saw the light on and they knew, and then the half a cent sales tax. And, you know, property values are up, 57,000 new residents into the county, and um, over $100 million in CARES Act funding and American Rescue Plan. I feel that to give somebody an average $250,000 home, a $31 tax break is actually sinful. I, I, I believe that with the opportunity we have, we've never been this rich, we've never had this much money in our emergency funds, that we should be at a level of a millage rate where we could give back each homeowner at least a minimum of $100. But what's interesting with that too, though, is if you look, one of the things I thought as a staff person who's been here for 18 years, we're at the 2004 staffing level. Correct. But yet the population's 100,000 more than it was in 2004. But I also think if you really think about it, I think this is one of the good things from COVID is, you know, we have learned that you can do more with less, right? We don't need brick and mortar. We don't need all the storefronts. Um, there's a lot of things that can be done from home. Our building inspectors have cell phones. You have online permitting now. We're writing and issuing more permits than we ever have before. And that came because of COVID. Yeah. So, you know, growth is not always bad. No. And, and just because there's growth doesn't mean you need more. I mean, we our parks are the same, right? So we don't need to increase people trimming trees and mowing grass, right? I mean, sure. we still have the same amount of parks. Um, our, our roads and our uh, water control and our drainage and stuff, that was failing the most, which is where a lot of the sure. money from the American, the American Rescue, Rescue Funds, funds up, yeah. we, we really as a board put a lot of money into that and we should, that should be the number one focus yeah. because that's the heart, right? If you don't have sure. those running and flowing and fixed, everything else around it's gonna fail. And yeah. so I'm happy with where that money went for that. Um, but I just feel that, and, that, and again, the CARES Act, and some of that did go back to the residents, you sure. know, mortgage assistance, rental sure. assistance. Small businesses. Yeah, yeah, right, and the small business assistance. So some people did see some of that funding, yeah. but we were able to put money in our emergency fund. And, and I know we need that because it takes one hurricane and look what happens, sure. right? But at the end of the day, government likes to spend. And so, I'm happy really where we are with our staff. I think that if anything, you know, we do need more staffing and probably the building department, planning and zoning. We, we need to probably implement a few more positions um, yeah. in some of those fields. But I don't know that it's fair to, con, you know, to keep comparing it to 2004. And I know there's people and commissioners that like to do that. Sure. And I don't know that it's the right thing to do because yeah. we are servicing the people I think very well with what we have, with the exception of our building and um, planning and zoning departments. When growth happens, those are the departments that they suffer the most them. and they need to staff up. Yeah. And whenever businesses are coming, you do need um, business navigators to help them walk through that process. Sure. So that is where staffing probably should be identified, you know, to help those people cross cross because that's very frustrating yeah. um, you know a, a little like if you decided to come into this county and you've never owned a business and you wanted to have something with your wife you wouldn't know where to begin and sure. so that's where the importance is of a business navigator yeah. and I see and just again selfishly looking at our division a lot's changed in communications mm -hmm. yeah we could reach a lot more people with social media but that's also now somebody wants an answer today or right. Sunday at 1 o'clock or Friday at 11 a.m. you know or Friday 11 p.m. you know Records, record, we've seen a huge increase in records requests, and that comes now to our and, office. And so. I was going to say, you're, I do believe that you are a department. Well, I'm not trying to no, pitch just, you for more staff. No, but. you're, you're <laughs> not. But, but I was going to say, you are a department that I would identify as needing more simply because sure. you're the direction of what everything's going, right? Everything is going through media. True, hopefully. So, social <laughs> media, Instagram, yeah, yeah. Twitter, yeah, yeah. you know, that is where everybody is leaning on now. The, the day of the newspaper and the magazine, those days are, they're done. And yeah. so, you know, you're a four, what, five man department now? Six. Oh, six, okay. So, but still, you know, yeah. you, you do all of the education, you do all of the shows, you know, like yeah. this show inside sure, St. Sure. Lucie, you know, you are the person that, has to stay in touch with everything that comes in through our email system and like you said the public records request that's huge in itself yeah. people don't realize how many thousands of requests we get yeah. on just that You're, you also have to sit there and um, make sure that crazy commissioners like me aren't responding to things on social media going yeah. whoa what commissioner townsend do you know yeah. you you have to put out the fires you well. have to sit there and hold the county 
whole yeah. because there's a lot of truth and untruth things being put out there on social media and you have to sit there and be the one to state the facts yeah. that's a full-time position for one or two people yeah. in itself because you should never have one person to be all True. what if you got sick you know what if you were in a wreck or you know people d are deserving of vacation so there should always be two that know yeah, yeah. how to do a, a thing so you know again you know Wow. I know what you do. I, I hate social that. media. I try to avoid it, but I know there's people that will call me or they'll send me a message and I go on a look and I go, oh gosh, here we go. I'm yeah. glad Eric's on it because yeah. you are. And I mean, you're even on that app next door. I mean, how many neighborhoods are there on next door that you a have lot. to follow? And that's the thing. We can't see every neighborhood right. we see our post, but anyhow, but yeah, it, it is strange though how technology can help in some areas, but it also it creates problems because I call it fake book. Yeah. You well, know, well, you just can even make from accessibility issues and then records retention and there's all these other things mm -hmm. that the private sector doesn't always think about exactly. when they launch their Facebook page. And, yeah. and you know, every single thing we do, every text, every phone call, yeah. everything that comes to any employee of this agency is public and it has to be held accountable yeah. and that's what your department does for the well, most part try. is you make sure that it's all there right well, thank you. we yeah. try but yeah but you make a good point there you know there's some areas where when you see the growth it does impact more than others mm -hmm. and, and less but um, one of the big growth areas and a big accomplishment of the county finally got the new Copus nursing home open. That's amazing. And, and it wasn't beautiful. us, but you know, we helped. That we, is it was beautiful. us to plant the seed. I'm know. telling you, the, uh, the, uh, I'm over, I, I was overwhelmed. It was absolutely yeah. gorgeous. I, uh, Flynn and I went in the day before it opened. And we're like, can we get rooms here? Like, I know. It, was, you know, it not, is, um, we need to be proud. Yeah. And you know, I, we have to give, you know, Commissioner Hutchinson's the one that absolutely. really championed that yeah. along with the VA and, she carried it across the finish yeah. line and she never gave up and, and it was a beautiful ceremony you know all of our elected officials were there even our representatives to the south came up for it and some came from the north and it, it was nice to see collaboratively how everybody came together on that day to celebrate yeah. it was beautiful yeah. it was a great ceremony too even the rain held off till the end it did yeah, yeah. i was worried about the, you know the the cameras and everything and the yeah. audio equipment, but we held out. It's, so it, it's good. Moving into this new year, you know, you said we've got some influx of money. You mentioned the American Rescue Plan funds and the board, the, the focus for that is kind of utilities and stormwater. And it's funny because you mentioned social media and I saw some gripes or some suggestions from down south. Well, why isn't that money being spent in Port St. Lucie? And Port St. Lucie's getting their own American Rescue Plan money, but also some of the projects I know we're doing right away now in White City area, like in Melville Road, where it's stormwater retention area. That will ultimately benefit people living downstream. You it know, will. In Port Saint well, and we're and we're looking at going in the people in the River Estates. I mean, they have suffered a long time with that water problem out there. And so, you know, we're going to go in and finally finish up the final stages of that and get that drainage taken care of. Uh, Lakewood Park, um, we're going to be going out for ballot to see finally, you know, do they want the water services? And if they do, that's fine. We're prepared now. And if they're not, then we're okay. We're moving forward with our own treatment plan up off Indrea Road and Taylor Dairy. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's a lot of good things that are getting ready to happen. And speaking of st uh, Midway Road and stuff, you know, we're even looking because of the distribution that's coming in on Midway Road, we're looking at putting a turnpike toll, you know, mm -hmm. plaza exchange there, road. exchange there. And, um, you know, we're looking at the extension of Jenkins Road. We're getting geared up for, for growth. Yeah. So. And that's what I think the board wanted to focus those rescue plan dollars mm -hmm. on the infrastructure to help facilitate, you know, extending, like the effort we did with the water lines up US-1 near Harbor Branch and out right. Kings Highway. Now we're seeing that, you know, I, you return know, on investment. I think in the next two years, you're gonna see a lot of things happen in St. Lucie County. You're gonna see the North Bridge project. You're going to see some more along Kings Highway of the paving. You're going to see some more things, I think, over on the beach side. I think you're going to start to see and hear more about the tea groins and the beach sand. I think, you know, you're going to actually see veterans knowing that they have quality of life in a nursing home and the activity around that. Um, Maybe even a homeless shelter, a veteran shelter, right? I was going right? to say, we, we did buy that duplex mm -hmm. and the, hom the homeless veterans are there. And we are pushing very, very hard to have a homeless shelter here. I think that that will happen. And I think it's going to happen within the next two years. I'm excited for that. That's something I've been passionate about. And that's the one thing I can say that um, Alfonso's worked diligently on since he's been here. Our and he has championed that. And I really, really know. appreciate that yeah. because it's nice to have somebody that has the passion I do for that. Because and he's a veteran too. He yes. serves, it serves And so, so I, I think that even though, you know, there's things right now 
that some people seem are doom and gloom. And I think we as Americans all over the United States are divided over silly, silly things. This is going to be 2022, I think, a year that people are going to maybe come back and find their way and know that we weathered the storms together and we are all going to stand reunited in the end. You know, it, it will be another election year, which is, you know, those are always tough years to get through. But um, I think people are finally realizing that we have become so divided, we need to find our way back. Yeah. And because of the good things, you know, we have a company looking at developing the North Hutchinson Island, um, that P3 project over there. And if that comes to fruition, that's gonna be absolutely amazing. It's gonna be a destination for St. Lucie County and the Navy SEAL Museum is gonna get even bigger and better than it is. And I don't know how that could be possible because it's really a beautiful museum, yeah. but it's gonna take it even to the next level. And so, you know, to see that, I personally wanna see an amphitheater down by our port. I want that whole Harbor Point area um, to remain fishing and I wanna see it more of a little bit nicer park and that to be an amphitheater where we can have concerts and you stuff. You were here in 97? I was. Do you remember when they when they first bought that property and yeah. had the floating bars and yeah. had the youth symphony do yeah. the little, yeah? Yeah, no, I've been here since the 80s. Yeah, I figured, but yeah, you know, so, for those that weren't here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I, I really think that even though I disagree with kind of, you know, the millage rate and we could have done better, sure. I will say that we are wealthier than we've ever been. And even since the conception of St. Lucie County, we've never had this kind of funding available to be able to move forward and do, do all the things that we're getting ready to do. And I think that people will be very pleased with what the outcome is going to be at the end. I always thought that, you know, everybody talks about the tradition area as the next big growth area, but that Indrio corridor, you know, at Kings Highway West, you know, where summer crush is and a lot of that ag land. You yeah, know, it's coming there. That's where it's coming. Yeah. And, and, you know, we um, are getting ready to really, I think, do great things at the airport. Yeah. You know, the hangar's out for bid. They had several people bid on that hangar. And whoever goes in there, I think, is going to be a, a, a game changer for our airport. We have somebody looking at the south side of the airport for, you know, a boutique at a hotel, which is yeah. exciting, um, which, you know, in the future we're looking at um, – an interchange pass right there coming yep. off St. Lucie Boulevard to the west. And so that's the one thing I can say about this board is the five years I've been on it. We have all had the vision and, you know, Commissioner Hutchinson and Commissioner Zadowski, they are finally getting to tie up a lot of their projects that they fought a long time for. Sure. And the funding is finally there for them, like the Harmony Heights and stuff like that area. And, and um, Commissioner Hutchinson's, um, you know, her areas of Indian River states, they're finally going to have closure with their roads and their water and everything. So um, the next growth is North County, yeah. which is my district. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, so you're going to see a lot of growth. You're going to see thousands of homes being built. There's several developments that have been approved to go in. The water lines are there. You know, the Publix is yeah. still looking at the corner of Emerson and Indorio Road. And then if the water goes through for Lakewood Park, you're going to see that's going to be our next hot hot area and and it flows right there into the airport and the industrial side right. of the airport on king's highway and so i really think that over the next five to ten years is where the county's going to go the city's doing amazing things to the south with the southern grove Absolutely. you know we've got the distribution um from uh, cheney amazon brothers, cheney, cheney brothers yeah. uh gosh fedex and you know i i don't know if this is true so i might not say it <laughs> but I, I have been told that Publix is going to be putting in a distribution center down in that area too so and that came from somebody very high up with Publix. Yeah. so i mean maybe i should be saying that i don't uh, know but but that's exciting right so they they see the things that are going on here and you know what we are the county that has you know the western corridor the main things to the west side sure. of the state we've got train we've got plane we've got water so i see why people see value in that of course i'm it. still waiting on my trader joe's really i yeah. want trader yeah, joe's okay. well i've never been so i'll have to put that on my list it's an experience <laughs> Every, is it, it better than bucky's because i finally went to a bucky's you know what i've never been to bucky's <laughs> but i'm hearing good things about bucky's i'm gonna have to go check that out because that might be better than trader joe's oh, it's interesting it's more of like a gas station meets walmart meets yeah um, I, I do want to go because i'm hearing everybody talk really wow. good about that yes i'm so, excited yeah well you mentioned elections and the city of port st Lucie just recently elected uh their uh, mayor, uh, Vice Mayor Shannon Martin, to fill mm -hmm. out Greg Orvac's term. I was, were you surprised? I was a little surprised that only 14, less than 14 percent voter turnout. I was a little surprised by that myself. I thought that that was really, really low, actually. But you know what? I think that the voters, um, you know, it was it was an awkward time. It was it, off. It was, weird. It was off. Sure, Sep late you know, September. People yeah. don't think about that, and you know, numbers are even low 
in a, in a gubernatorial race. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't have the turnout that you do in an election for a presidential than you do, you know, the governor yeah. and then a special election like that. It'll be interesting to see, you know, in December, the city of Fort Pierce has a special election. What, yeah. what percentage are they going to have? I, I think historically there's always been less sure. than 20 to 25% of the turnout and voting sure. in special elections anyways. I think that's been a pretty good number. Yeah. Um, well, I, see, I, I feel like it should be better. Some of you League of Women Voters, you were big on that. And like, we encourage people, I, you know, you see all people on social media, oh, I'm mad about this. Here's your opportunity to make a yeah, difference. No, you know? I, I agree. And you know, the thing is, it's so easy to vote, right? Yeah. You, if you can, there's early, early voting, voting yeah. there's vote by, you know, you can absentee ballot yeah. and then you can show up that day. So I really don't understand. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to yeah. be able to vote. And I think why, it's your duty. You know, no, and, and I agree. Yeah, I agree yeah, it is yeah, your duty. Yeah. If you want to make a difference in this world, yep. you need to be a registered voter. Yeah. Okay? And if you get your card and you don't exercise your right to vote, then I think you should surrender your card. And I, I even believe that if you don't vote after four years, then your card should be removed and you have to go back and get it again if you decide you want to vote. Yeah. You know, I mean, because I think, I think it is. I yeah. think that... That's how you make a difference. And, I, and I, I say all the time to people, when I hear them complaining, are you a registered voter? And when they say no, I'm like, then you have no right to voice <laughs> yeah. your opinion. I mean, you do, you're a sure, taxpayer you, yeah. and stuff. But, but I mean, I'm just saying, you want I'm change, that's how you create change, yeah. right? Get out and vote. Yeah. And vote for the person you feel is gonna be the best voice for you, or vote for the amendments that you're gonna agree with that's gonna affect your property values and your taxes. Yeah. And if you are not a registered voter, and you know what, let's be, let's be honest, there's people that do want to be registered voters and they're not able because mm -hmm. of a past history sure. and stuff like that. So that needs to be recognized and, as yeah. well. But um, yeah, I'm just, I am amazed every election, even before I was in office, um, why do you have a voter's registration card and not vote? Granted, I know that there's always opportunity, things come up, you're out of the state, sure, you know, sure. there's always, an air of, you know, 5% maybe that you can say, you know, I was in the hospital, but even that, yeah. you could still sign up and call the elections office and get an absentee ballot. So I, I, I I'm hoping- I don't think I've ever missed an election since I have in 30 not, years I've been able to I have not missed an election since I was a registered voter in 1979. Yeah, well, yeah. so um, well, I'm, I'm probably <laughs> old enough to be your mother, Erin. Um, That's okay, you don't look it. But, but yeah, so, I was I was disappointed, but yeah. congratulations, yeah, just, yes. congratulations yes. to no, Shannon. I'm not trying to dig it. Just, yeah, no, I know. It kind of surprised me. I'm like, really, only 14? Less yeah, than and 13, I knew you weren't 46. saying nothing negative. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just I mean, I just want to take the opportunity to say sure. congratulations, congratulations to, to um, Mayor Martin now. Yes. Yeah. And then there'll be a runoff in December for the other her seat for the other council great. member yeah. because like nobody said, got 51 percent. We'll also have yes. a, a special election as well. Speaking of ways people can make differences, we just put out a press release this week about. Uh, every November, the board does its reorg, and you guys reappoint people to different advisory committees. And, we do. And so we're looking for people to serve on those committees. And we, we encourage people on social media, instead of just complaining on social media, here's your chance. Go serve on planning and zoning, and, sit and, on code or and, citizen's budget. And, you know, so let's talk about that for a second. Um, I, I have appointees. We as a commissioner always appoint to these boards. And sometimes there's people that are on those boards and you know there, there's even people that have been my appointees that sometimes I think about well it's been five years maybe it's time to change and I don't want to change them because they're not doing a good job sure. I just want to change them to to give somebody else an opportunity but yet they take that very serious right and they're very proud that they get to sit there and serve and I and I think that's wonderful but at the same time you know don't think that you've done something wrong. Just allow, see, I feel the same way as far as my position. I believe in term limits, right? I, you know, I believe that as a commissioner, I'm, I'm hoping I'm making a difference, right? And, sure. but, I, but I don't believe that, you know, four or five terms later, I'm making the same impact I did in the first one or two, three terms. Now, it takes a full term for you to really understand your job and to really get out there and do things. But, you know, so I kind of look at that the same way for my appointees. And, you know, I, there are a couple, not many, but a couple that were on there prior to me being in District 5, and I kept them because I believed in them and thought they did a great job. Sure. And so you, I love the fact, though, that that's how you can make a difference or if you want to learn. Yeah. If you want to learn more about the Value Adjustment Board and you want because I get questions about that, what do they do? Like, sit on that board. 
be a part of that board and learn the process. You know, um, planning and zoning, code enforcement. Um, citizens' budget's a great one. The, oh, <laughs> citizens' budget's huge. People, yeah. if people sit on that board, they would learn so much. Just like the Citizens Academy class that we do. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm glad that when those dates go up, they're booked. I personally think that we need to do more of them. Yeah, I think we're trying. Yeah, I think we're because looking at doing it more than twice a year. But. I've heard people come out of those classes and say, wow, I didn't, un I just never understood that. I didn't get that. And I know just like when I was the chairman of the HOA board, you know, I always took them inside. I took them to the jail. I sure. took them to the, you know, water treat. I, I took them to the places for them to go inside and see how they were really ran in their tax dollars at work. And they would always walk out and say, I had no idea, like our landfill. Yeah. That field trip was impactful to those oh, people. They could not believe our landfill was like that and our recycling and yeah. stuff. You know, it, uh, so talk about Waste Pro. You know, um, people are complaining and, and, and I'm saying they shouldn't sure, because yeah. Waste Pro has issues. Yeah. But, you know, I, I just pulled up to Lakewood Park and I called him and I said, I'm at Winn-Dixie, I need somebody to come get me. I'm riding your trucks. And I rode. I, I look at what I take to my curb differently after riding with those boys that day. I mean, I lasted an hour and I finally had to sit in the truck and say, I'm too fat and old to do this. I don't know how you do it. I mean, the stuff they have to yeah. pick up, the stuff people throw out, I, I mean, in the rain and the cold and the heat, it's a hard job. Yeah. And so, you know, um, I, I am very, very mindful of what I take to my curve. And if I have a whole lot, I split it up and only take part of what I can. I put the rest out at the end of the week, you know. Sure. But but the good thing is they are, I think, finally correcting. I'm seeing a difference, you know, with my home. And um, I think overall we've seen a decrease in complaints. And of course, it comes in waves because the pandemic's still there. They got drivers out right. sick this week. They don't want to contaminate other drivers. You and know. they've had a couple job fairs and they've picked yeah, up, they you know, been. they've picked up some employees from that too. And you're right. I do think that our COVID numbers are down. They're, 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 they're declining. Down. And like this, this is not COVID. I yeah. don't have COVID. I've never had COVID. This is allergies. Um, so, you know, I even hear it from restaurants in the last week that they're saying that people are starting to finally come in and make applications for work. Good. So I think because the numbers are coming down, people are becoming a little bit more um, okay with going out. And yeah. I see the restaurants busier, and yeah. I, I see people kind of going back to having birthday parties and you know stuff like that. I've heard a couple people talking about their holidays again. So you know, I think I think our governor's done a great job personally, and um, you know, I, I being a past realtor, you know, I still have friends in the real estate business, and our numbers are up, yeah. and people are still coming here, and they're coming here from all over the world. That so. Hasn't you and know, tourism the last three months, they've set done, record numbers. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, they're, they're, even though COVID has taken us in a different direction, yeah. there's a lot of good that's come from that. So yeah. we can't, I mean, it, it's divided us, I think, along with, well, along with political standards. Sure. But at the end of the day, we've all rode this wave together, and I think we're all going to come out on top together. Yeah. Well, Christian, anything yeah. else you want to mention before we wrap up the show? Um, well, I want to talk real quick about yeah. redistricting. Yes. Yeah, the census is in, and 57,000 increase, which I believe that number is low personally. Um, but you know, it's going to redraw lines. And so it's possible that um, if you're in district one, you might end up in two or five or whatever. So, you know, and again, it, people ask me this all the time, just because you're in district five doesn't mean you can't talk, you know, to Commissioner Hutchinson or whatever. And so it just means you're in that district and, yeah. and you d your voting precinct is in that district and the person that represents you as a commissioner has to live in that district. That's so the biggest that's thing. That's the biggest everybody thing. Votes Every, we all, everybody yeah. votes for us, all five of us. And I take calls from all five districts. They call my office and I, and I help them. And so, um, but that's probably going to create a little bit more confusion because I've already had people kind of ask me about it. Sure. Like, and I've even actually had people say, oh, I don't want a district. So and so I don't want a district. I'm like, it doesn't matter what district you're in. If you love your home and you're happy living there, it's fine. Stay there. Like you said, unless you plan to run for office. Right. Then, then, you, then you want to think about where you're going to live, yeah, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So I just wanted that to be put out there. Of course, the tax but you know, bill's gone out. Michelle Franklin's um, property appraiser has sent those out. There's any questions? Um, the redistricting, the infrastructure. I, I, I never take notes, but I did today. We <laughs> talked. That's all right. Yeah. The bridges. Brightline. Yes. Um, I get a lot of questions about that. Brightline has kicked back in gear. Yep. They're at Walton Road. And um, I've seen some of um, the activity in the last week back in St. Lucie Village. Village clearing. Of course, there's seven crossings, crossings there. there yep. So, yes, yeah, so everybody, Brightline is back, and they are doing their, their stuff. And, of course, our buses. 
Um, our buses are getting rebranded in its arc, and you're going to see all the beautiful artwork on the new buses. And I do want to take a moment to say that um, I know that I speak on behalf of all of us here at the county that our prayers go out to the family that lost their sweet mm -hmm. little girl yeah. at the beginning of this week. And I want to take this advantage in, of this time and say that everybody needs to be mindful when you see a school bus yeah. and you're going through a school crossing guard. Um, this could have been prevented. And so my families are with, you know, my prayers are with that family, just like I'm sure all of ours yeah. are. But please, everybody, be mindful of that. It's, it's more than just school buses. I've seen aggressive drivers on Indian River Drive, and I, I know, know we've been fighting that yeah. for a while, but people have passed me on a Sunday afternoon, and I've got the cruise control set at 35 because I'm, I'm enjoying the view. That's I why I take to, that no, ride. I have to tell you, I, I actually take the drive, and I've said it to my husband the last couple of times. You know what? It's nice to be able to go down here and go 35 miles an hour, not have somebody behind you honking their horn, <laughs> having road rage, and get to take in the view of the beautiful homes. And when it's a beautiful day and the water is yeah. clear, it's nice to finally be able to sit back and enjoy the ride. Yeah. It really is. And so, you know, I just want to say in a world full of opportunity, everybody, because we have a lot of opportunities in this world, just always remember to be kind. And, you know, fall's coming, my favorite time of the year. I'm looking forward to opening my windows and crisp air coming through. And Me that too. means the holidays are around the corner. So, yeah. Eric, thank you for what you do in these oh. shows and helping us put information out there. And everybody, I hope you enjoy your fall season. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Commissioner. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break and we'll come back and wrap up the show. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of Inside St. Lucie. We hope you'll tune in again next month. If you have topics or subjects you'd like to see covered here on the program relating to St. Lucie County, Give us a call at 772-462-1791 or send us an email at pio at stlcco.org. And if you'd like to see previously shared episodes of this or other SLC TV programs, visit our YouTube channel at youtube slash I'm your host, Eric Gill, for myself and the staff. Thanks for watching. <laughs>